Hey everyone, it's Dan, and in this video we're going to take a look at some code that I was sent by a reader over Twitter. So Michael sent me this piece of code, and he was asking for some feedback. So first of all, let's take a quick look at this uh, get answer function that Michael sent me, so we can figure out what it's doing, what it's supposed to do. And um, then we can dive into some of the questions that Michael had, and do a bit of refactoring. Right, so if you're wondering what I'm using here, I'm trying out this spiffy new IDE called Thony, right, which is, I guess, like a word play on Pythony or something. Like, it's it's kind of cute. It's a really good IDE for learning, I think. It's not really a full-blown Python editing environment like uh, PyCharm or, you know, the Sublime Text setup that I use, but it's actually pretty great for these little tests and trying things out. So it's kind of a trial run for me. So if this is helpful and you're enjoying this video, then just leave a quick comment below. I'd really appreciate it. All right, so let's take a look at Michael's code here. Now, what do we have here? So this is a Python function called getAnswer, and it gets one parameter called prompt. And then in the first line here inside this function, we're using the built-in input method or the built-in input function to request user input. So this is switches to interactive mode, and I have to do a bunch of typing and hit return, and then we get the result of that, you know, what I typed in, we get the result of that stored into this answer variable. And then we have a bunch of comments that we're going to take a look at really soon. And below that, we have a while loop that compares the answer that we got earlier to the strings yes and no. And if the answer is not either yes or no, then we're just going to ask the user again. And we're going to keep asking the user forever, essentially, until they finally type either yes or no and hit the return key. And then at the end of that, we're going to return that answer. So if you're looking for a real world application of this function, imagine you were writing some kind of tool that could delete a file on your hard drive. And uh, maybe you want to get confirmation from the user, right? Like you want me to wipe your hard drive or delete a bunch of stuff. And that would be a really good time to ask them, you know, to actually type in yes or no. So I imagine this could be the sort of function that you'd be writing there. Anyway, so here's how you would use that function in practice. So here I'm calling the get answer function and passing it a prompt, and then I'm printing out the result. So let's take a look at what this does um, right now. Okay, so now, you know, I'm running this, and when you look down here, I'm getting this question, yes or no. So, you know, maybe you can just type maybe and see what happens. Okay, that wasn't the yes or no. Well, that didn't work either. So it's going to just keep asking me for a yes or no answer, right? So if I go, if I go yes, then this is the returned answer that we're getting back out of the function. And if I type anything else, then it's just going to keep asking me for the correct answer, essentially. Now, Michael had some questions on the best way to implement this function. And this is why I'm recording this video, because now together, we're going to refactor this function to make it nice and Pythonic. So Michael was trying to make his implementation more Pythonic. And he had thought about some other example implementations here. So for example, the first one was uh, using a while loop, and then explicitly checking the answer variable against yes or no. So you can do that of course, but um, I really like the other options that Michael had here, where he was using the in operator, and then the negation of that with the not in uh, version, or, you know, by prepending the, the, the Boolean not before that. And um, personally, I really liked this implementation here, where we're having the while loop, and we're checking it against a tuple of strings rather than a list, because constructing a tuple is going to be a little bit faster. And really, you can use a tuple every time when you don't have uh, a mutable object. So we're never going to make a change to this tuple here, because it's just a, a constant that we use to compare against yes or no, right. So I kind of like this, what um, I think could be improved about this implementation is that we're duplicating some of this code here. So when you look at that, we're pulling the answer out of the input function. And then we have the exact same line of code down here again. And, um, you know, it's not terrible, because this is just a very small amount of code. But any kind of duplication, in the long run, it, it means that you have to spend more time on maintenance, you have to spend more time on cleaning things up. So personally, I really try to avoid that. So what I would like to do here 
is actually refactor this so that we can get rid of um, this duplication. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rename this function. I'm just going to call it get answer original. And then we're going to start re implementing the same answer function. So this I really like this prompt thing This is kind of cool. And um, the way we're going to start now is we're going to start with an infinite loop. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to loop forever. Because really, this is what the function did before anyway, right? It, um, it, in my mind, didn't really make sense to ask for an answer first, and then check it and then keep asking for an answer in a different place. Really, what we're doing here is we're saying, let's just keep asking for the answer forever. If it's not the right answer, we're going to keep asking again and again and again. So it's never going to stop. And I feel like representing this structure with a loop that goes on forever with this wild true loop that's never going to exit unless we manually break out of it is, um, is better. It's better to represent that structure very explicitly. And it's going to allow us to get rid of the duplication. So what we can do here now is we can read in the answer. It's pretty much the same. We're just going to call the input function again, now reading in the answer. And so now at this point, this is looping forever, right? This will just keep asking for an answer. So when I run this, uh, you can see here, I can type whatever I want. It's never, it's never going to let me out because this is just an infinite loop. So what, uh, what we need to do is we need to have a condition where we're terminating the loop, we're leaving the loop. So what I would probably do here is I would check answer against this list of valid strings, right? So I'd probably do something like this. And I'm a fan of single quotes, but that doesn't really matter at all. So just feel free to ignore that use whatever you like. Um, okay, so if answer is either yes or no, then we're going to break the loop by returning this answer. And in any other case, we're going to keep on going. So if we try this out now, we should get the exact same result. So if I go, yes or no, maybe mm, didn't really work. If I go no exclamation point, no, didn't work. If I go no, then we're jumping out. So this has the benefit that we don't have this line here duplicated, right? We don't have a duplicate uh, call to input. And I think for that reason, it is, um, it's a more concise and cleaner implementation. And this is actually something like this pattern here. This is something you can do every time when you're faced with a situation like that, right? When you have some setup code, that is also part of the, the looping thing that you want to do, right? If you want to keep asking for an answer, like keep reading from a file, then it's usually better just to have a infinite loop on top that represents that that ongoing operation, rather than reading the first bit, and then looping over all of the remaining bits. I like code or processes implemented in code, where every single step, if it's a repeating process is, is implemented in the exact same way, there should be no difference from reading the first bit compared to reading all of the remaining bits, right. And um, this is a way to get here if you can use this pattern. Now there are actually some smaller tweaks we can make to this code here. Um, but this was certainly, you know, the biggest uh, structural one. So let's try and do some polishing here. Okay, so I'm running the script again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give a valid answer that is going to fail the test. So one way I can fail the test is by typing space no. Or if I put a bunch of spaces and go yes, or if I go yes, and then a bunch of spaces, that won't qualify as a valid yes or no, I need to go explicitly yes or no with no extra characters. And um, this is technically correct, I guess, but it makes it a little bit harder for the user to interact with our program. So a small usability tweak we can make here is calling the strip function. So let me show you what that does. So the strip function is built into the string object in Python. So I can go here. And I can say, um, hello. And you know, that's just a string. So I could go hello dot strip. And it wouldn't really do anything. Now, what strips going to do is it's going to remove leading and trailing white space. So if I put a bunch of white space here, and then call strip on it, I get the 
exact same string with the white space removed. So just so you believe me, if I don't do this, then of course Python is going to include the white space in the string. And we can take advantage of this behavior here by calling the strip function or the strip method on this answer string that we've got here. So what we can do now is now when I go, maybe, you know, of course, still going to fail the test, but now I can put as many spaces as I want and it's going to succeed. Now what you've seen here is that we didn't return the stripped answer. So you can see down here is that the returned answer still included the the extra white space. Now, of course, you know, I would be tempted to go answer dot return answer dot strip here as well, but then we have a bunch of duplication again. So what we could do here is actually move the strip call up there and get rid of it anywhere else. And now if we do if we run through the same example, then we get the nice and clean return value that only includes the actual string content. Now another small issue, I'm not sure if it's really an issue, but you know, just wanted to point it out. If I go uppercase no, or, you know, any combination of that, it, it doesn't work. So something else that we could do here is we could not only strip the string, but also convert it to lowercase. And in that case, we're going to get the expected result, where we kind of normalize the user input before we try and process it. And that's generally a good idea. Now, this new implementation, it actually moves away quite a bit from the example code that Michael sent me. But you know, kind of staying in the spirit of this, uh, this refactoring, or what this code is trying to achieve, I think it makes sense to make some of these changes or actually make make all of them. <laughs> So this would be my final implementation. And then yeah, we can run through this again. Now this is pretty resilient, right? So of course, this isn't going to work because the exclamation point is uh, not white, white space and gets filtered out. And maybe you could do that as an exercise, right to filter out punctuation. Um, that could be interesting. And um, but now if I go, you know, a bunch of spaces or any kind of weird spelling here, this get answer function is going to process it correctly, it's going to clean up the user input, and it's going to give me the result that I wanted. So now that we have our refactored solution, let's take a quick look at how this code actually executes. And this is where Thunny comes in. So what I can do here is I can debug the script, just click on this little bug icon here. And this will execute this Python code step by step. And for every single step, every single operation that takes place, we can take a look at what's actually going on behind the scenes. So let's take a look at what happens inside this get answer function. So here, initially, I'm just going to step over this function definition. And then I'm going to use the step into functionality to step into this code so we can see what happens behind the scenes. So I'm going to step into this line a couple of times. So now we've got the print function. And so Python is parsing that out, then it needs to process the function call for the get answer function. And it needs to construct the string. So it knows what to hand over to get answer. All right, so now we've processed the string. And now we're inside this get answer function. And we can also see down here that we have this local variable that you can see up there called prompt, that is the prompt that we passed in previously. So now we can step into this, uh, this implementation for the get answer function, again, with the same keyboard shortcuts. So now, okay, we're parsing out the true, well, true is just a constant true. And we're entering the while statement. And now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So again, we're parsing out this line here. And Python figured out what the prompt was. It's passing the prompt to the input function. So the first thing we need to do here is to call input off yes or no. And then once we get a return value, we're going to strip it first and then lower case it, right? So here, now I've stepped into the, the input call. And then you can see down there in the shell, now that's where the interpreter is asking me to, to put some input. So now I can go um, 
you know, I can go, uh, ba -ba -ba, I can go, um, yes, and a bunch of spaces. When I hit return, we're back in the debugger. So now you can see that Thony shows me exactly what happened. We got a return value from the input call that was lowercase y, uppercase e, uppercase s, and a bunch of spaces. So just a string here. So now Python can evaluate the rest of this expression. And first of all, it's going to do this bit here, where it calls strip on this string. So this is going to shorten the string because it got rid of the extra white space. And next up, we're going to call lower on this already shortened string. So this converted our string into a lowercase yes, which is the cleaned up version, the normalized version that we were looking for. And now we can, we have the answer, right? It's yes. And now we can compare that to our tuple. So grabbing the answer, and then we need to build that tuple. So yes, is just yes, no is just no, and the whole thing is a tuple. And so now Python can evaluate this in expression by checking if yes is inside the tuple, yes or no. And I mean, of course it is. So the result of this expression is now true. And now that means we're stepping inside this if statement here, and we're returning the answer object. And the answer object in this case is yes. So now we're jumping back. All that remains is a call to the print function. And when that executes, we get a return value of none. We're done with our program. You can see here, we also printed out yes. So this was step by step what happened there behind the scenes. And again, I think there's a really powerful feature in Thony. And if you have any trouble figuring out what some Python code or a snippet of Python code is doing behind the scenes, then a tool like Thony can be very, very helpful. So yeah, so these are the changes that I would make to this function that Michael sent me. And if you want to see the comparison again, this was the original. And then we got rid of the duplication. And we made the function more resilient by adding the strip and lower calls here to get rid of some extra stuff at the beginning. And at the end of this input answer that we're reading from the user. All right, so if you like this video and you want to get more just like it, then click the subscribe button in the lower right. There's also a free Python course you can take on my website. Just check out the description and it will have the link. All right, that's everything in this video. So happy Pythoning and have a great week.